Hi guys, today I'm just going to briefly go through George Garzoni's triadic chromatic approach. His own method for improvising. One thing before I start though. This method is much more about breaking away from cliches and predictability. That's really what it's for. It's almost like a cliche buster or a rut buster for an improviser who starts to play the same things or hears the same things or starts really falling into predictability. The first principle is that the triads must be connected by a half step. So if we take a triad of C and we go down a semitone, we have the F sharp or we go up a semitone, we have the A flat. So now we have this and we move down a semitone from that note G and play an F sharp triad. That wouldn't be correct in this regard. There's nothing wrong with that, but in this regard it wouldn't be um, useful because it would be predictable. The same way that if I ascend by a half step and play the A flat arpeggio, that wouldn't be acceptable because it's completely predictable. It's extremely useful if the second triad goes in a different direction. So let's play our C triad, move up a semitone to the A flat and play a D flat triad, obviously going in a different direction. Okay, this time we will play the C triad and we will go down a half step and play a G flat triad. Straight away from even this basic outlook, you can see that we're moving away from predictable patterns, which are easy to fall into. Another idea, of course, is displaced permutations. Now this just means playing the notes of the triad in a different order. So instead of, you might have, and of course you've changed the order of the notes. Now that's simple, but it does affect the change to the next triad that you're going to play. So instead of moving the triad up a semitone from G, or down a semitone from G, it's now going up a semitone from E, or down a semitone from E. So we have changed the permutation. Also, when this is displaced, it's counted as a different inversion. Because it finishes on E, it's considered a first inversion. So to begin with, there would be two root position triads. So that would be improper. Next, we would have two first inversions. And they're considered first inversions because the last note finishes on the third of the chord. In this case, F sharp for D and the B for G. Lastly, we have two second inversions, F and D flat. So what we're going to do is play this basic triad of C and now we're going to use inversion and displaced permutations. So we're going up to this A flat but rather than play we're going to play so we've displaced the notes in that triad. Now we will play a G first inversion triad. So now from this note G, 
we're going to go up a semitone and play a displaced D flat major triad. So from this last note F, we will now come down with a C major second inversion triad. Finally from the note G, we'll descend a semitone to a displaced F sharp triad. So. Okay, the next part is a random chromatic approach. And this is really where this is all heading. So everything sounds random. So there's not predictable patterns. These chromatic lines must stay within the interval of a major third. So we will choose C as our first note and play up a major third to the note E. Within that lies five semitones or five half steps. Each note cannot be repeated consecutively, so we will take C as the starting note and we will go up a tone to the note D. Now we can't go up a tone again, so we will go up a semitone. Now we can't go up a semitone again to E, so we'll go down a tone to D flat. So we have... Okay, so let's try this idea. F major 7, F sharp diminished 7, going to G minor 7. So we'll have an F triad, second inversion, going to a G flat, first inversion triad, over this F major 7. Now on the diminished 7th, the F sharp diminished 7th, we're going to play a D, or implied D major, and coming back with a B flat nine augmented triad, or arpeggio. So, This time we'll take A minor 7, D minor 7, go to G minor 7. So for this A minor 7, we'll have some A minor in there, and now we go to A flat first inversion. On the D minor 7, we're going to use some chromatics. And this is an extremely good example to see how, when you get this um, idea down, you can then go back and mix it in with what you have already. What you'll find is that this goes from consecutive to non-consecutive. So we have this line. Which then goes into G minor with a diminished and A triad or A7 flat 9.
In conclusion, this is just using major triads. You still have to apply this to minor, augmented and diminished. But the key to the whole thing is to remove predictability. And when you start playing different inversions and changing the permutations, um, you do find new things and it's awkward at times to play and frustrating a little bit because you just want to play these comfortable things or patterns or fingering or whatever and you can't. You've got to change it um, and it's extremely useful if you're developing and you want to keep developing especially as a composer and improviser because you do come up with new ideas and when you come up with new ideas you can't settle for the old um, cliches really. You think, oh no, I need to do something better. I can make this better. I can improve what I'm doing. So I find this extremely useful. It's not something that I follow on a daily basis and it's not something that I'm obsessed with, but it's something that I acknowledge, um, especially if I need to develop something where I feel that I'm not developing at the level or rate that I should be. Then I sort of come back to this thinking. Um, but it's only once in a while. Also, it doesn't mean that George Garzoni follows all of this either. I mean, he does this, but I don't think he actually follows all of it. But I expect he uses it in the same way that I would use it, or maybe most people would, and that is to remove predictability, cliches, and break out of ruts, and use it as a rut buster, as it were. Anyway, if this video was of any use to you, then please smash the subscribe button because that keeps the channel going. Click the like button because that helps with the algorithm. Click the notification button if you like the video. Write a comment if you want to comment on anything. And I'll see you all in the next video. And thank you for watching.